about at the point where now the nerves to the legs. It may just be worth saying that the actual spinal cord finishes higher up in the vertebral canal than people often think. It actually finishes in the small of the back and much of the rest of the vertebral canal is occupied by leashes of nerve fibres running down towards the lower limbs. Which you so can very clearly see here because these are all nerve fibres, you see. That's right, and, and we're going to now follow the longest of those down to take us back to our wiggling toes. Cut this, please. So the end, you see it very clearly, the end of the spinal cord is here and all these are now nerves and we follow the largest one through the sciatic nerve at the back of the thigh. Therefore, I have to remove now the gluteal muscle. But the spinal cord contains tens of millions of nerve fibres. So every minute of every day, there are tens of millions of signals passing down your spinal cord to connect with motor neurons which move your muscles, as well as many other tens of millions of sensory impulses coming back towards the brain. It's an amount of computing power that is actually equaled by nothing else that we know. What I have to remove here is now part of the sacrum because within the sacrum, the plexus runs down. I continue now to take the spinal cord, or better to say, the nerves at the end of the spinal cord out. The initial little roots that come out of the spinal cord contain either motor movement fibres, those that right. come out at the front, or mm -hmm. sensory fibres, those that come in at the back. But the peripheral nerves, which we're now coming down to, contain both mixed motor and sensory fibres, which is why a nerve injury uh, hmm? usually produces both mixed movement and sensory symptoms. So what I actually removed is a sacrum in parts of the bone. And I must be careful. I cut, it, cut the nerves on the right side. Here I expose the rectum, the large intestine, from behind. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, yes, I got it. Yeah, wonderful accent. Ooh. Yes. Boah. So put it all up, please, here. And we are now already down here, the sciatic nerve here, and we go all down. So you see, in, within the sciatic nerve, you see the different nerve, nerve fibers. If the, if the central nervous system, that is the brain and spinal cord, are the main central processes, the peripheral nerves are the wires that connect these central processes to the muscles. The peripheral nerves take movement signals down to groups of muscles to induce a particular type of movement, and they also take sensory feedback, which allows us to continuously monitor what we're doing. We follow the nerve down to the toes, uh, cutting off the muscle branches which innovate the muscles of the calf and take the nerve all out of its bed all the way down and now we are already down here uh, at the ankle. So I cut off now the nerve that comes to the last uh, muscles of the toe and now I take it all out from the top I take the spinal cord out of the vertebral canal, take it out here, the spinal plexus, sciatic nerve, popliteal nerve, and also down to the toe. And I bring it over here, and I need, need some assistance now. I don't need this uh, machine anymore. Could you bring it away, Nadine and Marius?
Thank you, because the nerve is really very long. Down to the toe. Well, let's try and give you an idea of the staggering complexity as well as the real beauty of our nerve fibre network. I just come over here to our live model. And if we could just begin to take the lights down, please. So here we have, projected onto Dennis's back, a model of both our central and peripheral nervous systems. And so we've finally been able to show you the full journey of a thought which started with wiggling the toes up in the brain, passed down the spinal column, into a leash of nerves passing down the legs, and was then able to give the muscles in the front of the leg the signal to wiggle the toes. A movement which seemed inconsequential, but which I think you'll now agree has an amazing complexity behind it. Now we have time for some questions, please. Uh, once the heart stops to beat, how long does it take before brain cells begin to die? The brain is actually the most sensitive organ in the body to lack of oxygen, and it starts to die within a minute. Next, next question, please. Sometimes when we get a pick feeling in our skin, we say that it's a nerve ending. Is that really a nerve ending, or is it just some sensation in the skin? If, if you uh, get a sensation of pins and needles in the skin, it's because a lack of oxygen to the hand, say, because it's been in a funny position, causes the nerve fibres to fire off. And we feel that as a sensation, even though it's only actually originating from the nerve fibres. Next question. I know you said you, start, you did some, some pre-stuff to get the skin off. If the person had had more fat, would it have been harder to get the skin off? When the person would have more fat, I would need much more time, about five times as long. One more question. When the, when the spinal cord was severed, it reminded me of um, when Christopher Reeve broke his neck. Now, in doing so, um, all of the muscles I mean, he broke his neck, so that just severed everything for him, right? As compared to some people who are paraplegics or have some movement. Yeah. Very important is the head. When it happens up here, it's quadriplegic, nothing moves anymore. Perhaps he can uh, open the eyes and close the eyes. When it goes down here, then he cannot uh, uh, move his leg anymore. It's a paraplegic. So it depends very much on the head and only on the uh, cut of the damage at the spinal cord. Let's assume our model now decides I want to wiggle my toe. The command starts here in the cortex of the brain, runs down through the spinal cord, down the sciatic nerve to the toe. And to demonstrate you this, at our model, I like now, please assistance, to go over to our model. Dennis, thank you very much for presenting yourself. So what actually happens? We go to the right side here. Because we did it at the same side. Dennis brain, spinal cord, and could you follow it exactly right to the toe? You see the Length is absolutely uh, proper. And this is a summary of our program. When Dennis, shown here in the real specimen, decides to wiggle its toe, it goes from this brain, as you see it, in this section, down the spinal cord, down the nerves, into the toe, so he can wiggle it. Please. This woman's heart has beat a billion times. She also has taken a quarter of a billion breaths. To understand those rhythms is to grasp the poetry of anatomy.